Day one, we're going back to school, we have a mouse. Did I do anything good for anyone today? You're silly. Both of those things can go hand in hand, and I refuse to be told otherwise. To all of the other teachers out there, happy first day of school. We did it. Happy first day of school. The kids are all in the car and ready and I will. And Eli, hold this little guy up. Day one, we're going back to school, we have a mouse. We're gonna drop him off in a field that is close to our school before we get to our school. Uh, not super close to our school, so we're not introducing mice to our school, but a field where there is water nearby and I feel like all the things he would need to thrive, we just don't need him living here uh, on our front porch anymore. So he's very cute. Eli gave him a whole hunk of cheese. The boys have matching shirts on today. Miss Charlie is back there. Everyone has their backpacks? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we've got our backpacks. I've got my bag. I've got my breakfast. We're leaving at a good time. Things are going smoothly so oh, sorry, far. I have my breakfast in my lunchbox. Good, good. All right, so off to school we go. We are releasing our little mouse friend. He doesn't really think he wants to come out. So that's Please complicated. Take the cheese out. Hold on, bro. Oh. oh, sorry. Oops. Oh, don't. Yeah, you gotta move, little mouse friend. Come on. He's so tidy. Ride the cheese. Ride the cheese. Go. Come on. Go. It's okay. We're trying to set you free so you have a bigger house. Oh my god. Look at the cheese. You need a third hand, Eli. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Cheese is out. There's your cheese, and we'll provide you with your first couple of meals. Oops. Oh. It won't, yeah, it won't stay open, so you're gonna have to hold it. And oh, yeah, boy. just give him a gentle shake, because he... Oh, wait, if I put him on the roof, then he can't grab onto anything. Oh, yeah, that's true. Go. He's trying to Go. grab with his tail. Go. Oh my gosh, buddy. Oh. He's, uh, he's good at what he does. He's like, nope, I will not come out. Yes, you will. You would rather be out. Oh, he's starting to go. There, go. there, go, buddy, go. Go, buddy. go. no, yes. Yeah. There you go, sweet guy. No, Colin. Careful. What? I know, I know yes, you really want to touch him. him. Yeah. He could get raped. Yeah, mouse bites aren't good. Hi, little fella. Yeah, too. Little that? fella. Is that a snail or a slug? Hard to know. Let's move. Um, okay. Well, let's. Can you grab Hi, a little bit of that grassy stuff? Just break it off and we'll put it like over him and the cheese a little bit. I just don't want birds to fly by and see the bright colored cheese and then end up getting him. So we'll just put some grass over him. Have a good life, so buddy, okay? give him a little protection there yeah he's gonna go and burrow in and find a little place to live okay goodbye buddy goodbye You're silly. We're getting close to go time. We're about 20 minutes out from students being here. Little Miss is excited for her day. She's hungry, she didn't have breakfast at home, so she's gonna snack on some breakfast here at school. But the classroom is good, all of our cute lighting is on, and we're getting ready.
I don't feel like I have a ton that I need to do, but at the same time, I feel like I have everything that I need to do. I feel like I just can't think through what I actually need to do right now. So I'm just tackling whatever comes to mind, I guess. I did just think of one thing I need to do. I want to put their folders and their name pages that go in the front of their folder on their desks right now. That way they'll know right where to sit when they come in. I prefer to have these seats not really assigned, but chosen for them on the first day. I just feel like it goes a little bit better. So that's gonna be my choice today to do that. So we're gonna get those put out on desks right now. Everyone's seat has been chosen for now. I'm sure there will be plenty of changes to come, but for now, everyone has their folder and their coloring page with their name on it on top of their folder. That will be their morning work today after they find their backpack hook and hang their backpack and unpack anything that they need to bring into the classroom with them. Now, I did just think of one other thing I need to do. I printed out my jobs yesterday, but I never printed students' names in order to assign them jobs. Or in our class, we do B-Shard Bucks, so they actually get hired for their job. They apply, and applying just looks like raising their hand. And then I hire them, and that way I can put their names next to the job that they have been hired for. So I'm gonna get their names printed now. I think I have enough time. I'll probably have enough time to get it printed and I just need to cut it here in class, but that will be no problem because I have my handy dandy little uh, personal size cutter that I got from my Amazon teacher wish list. So that's what we're going to do now. I do need to get Colin on the bus to go to his school. Charlie is staying here in this building as well as Eli. So that's what we're going to spend our next couple of minutes doing. I'm getting excited, nervous, all of it, all of it. It's time to get this sweet dude on the bus to go to no! the garden. It's, it's not going to be to kindergarten time. Not to Florida, to kindergarten. No! We have arrived home after our first day of school, and this is how this little boy's first day is ending. First day of kindergarten tuckered him right out. A little sweetie. I'm gonna go wake Colin up. He's his first day of kindergarten and is sleeping in the car and he needs to wake up so he doesn't sleep forever tonight but just goes to show you how much it takes out of these little guys and I'm just I'm in a unique position I guess not super unique but I'm able to see not only the teacher side of things and know how exhausting it is for teachers on the first few days of school and really all year but mostly it's just a different level of exhausted in those first few days of school but then I'm also able to see it from the perspective of a mom and see my children in varying ages and how they process that exhaustion. I have had a headache every day for the last three days. Today was my first day with students, but I had two staff days prior to this and I've had a headache at the end of the day, every day. And I've been trying to hydrate. I've been trying to give myself a little bit of caffeine to make sure it's not caffeine withdrawals. And ultimately, it's just like if I'm sitting still, I'm good. But the minute I get up and I start moving, it starts to throb. So it hits us all in different ways. That's one of the things that I am experiencing. And we're going to go ahead and wake little Colin. He's probably maybe going to be a little grouchy here. We'll see. Hi, sleepy guy. How you doing? Let's wake him up the rest of the way. 
And that's that. That's a wrap on day one of the current school year. I can't believe that we have already reached the point where day one is here and now we've reached the point where day one is essentially done. The first day of school comes with a lot of feelings, both for students and the teachers in their lives. And for me, day one comes with excitement, nervousness, longing for the students I've had and now have bonded with and built strong relationships with, while also feeling excited about the relationships that I know I will get to build with my new group of students. Something that I really love about teaching fourth grade now versus sixth grade, which I used to teach, is that fourth graders I had are now fifth graders. And in our school, third through sixth grade are all in one building. So my fourth graders who move up to fifth grade are able to come back and see me if they choose to during little pockets of time throughout the day. Seeing those familiar faces and their smiles and having their hugs today meant so much to me because of course I am so excited about my new group of students, but I love the students I've had in the past and it's so special to get to see them, to hear about how their summers were and for them to still be around and to easily be able to come back and connect with me. Previously, my sixth graders were off to a whole nother building. They went to the middle school for seventh and eighth grade in our district and I did see them, but not nearly as much and never at the beginning of the school year. So there was just more of a disconnect and that relationship that we had worked so hard to build felt kind of like it disappeared. I know it didn't, but it felt that way because they were gone. They weren't in the same building and I wasn't seeing them regularly. So I really love that my fourth graders are now fifth graders and I still get to see them all throughout the day and all throughout the building. When you hear a teacher say that the first day back to school is exhausting, it is no joke. It is exhausting. It is mentally and physically draining. And it's not a bad sort of exhaustion. I think that sometimes when we say that we're exhausted, that sounds as though we are either complaining or being negative. And instead, I think that you can be exhausted and it can be a good thing. You can be exhausted and it can be for all positive reasons. And that is what teacher tired is like on the first week back to school. I am already exhausted. I've technically been back to school for three days, but this is my first day with students. But those three days have exhausted me. There's been so much prep, so much brain power that's gone into everything that I've done over the last three days, the first two days with just staff and getting all of our ideas out and our last minute thoughts and fine tuning our schedules and preparing for today when our students are actually with us. And I am straight up exhausted, but that exhaustion is not me complaining or wishing for anything to be different. It's just, it's just the facts. We spend a lot of time trying to make day one the best that it can be for all of the new little people in our lives, including any other kids that we come into contact with throughout the day. And when you are also a parent, you are trying to make the first day wonderful for your own children too. So there are a lot of little people in my life between my own children, students I've had, students I currently have, and just other students that are in my building where I am trying to help them in any way that I can to make their day just simply the best it can be. Sometimes it's as simple as a big smile from someone that can turn a student's day around, especially on day one. Day one can be so overwhelming for many kids. So a smile can go a really long way. So I'm trying to keep that smile on. I'm trying to connect with every kid that I'm coming into contact with and make sure I'm meeting their needs and just doing my very best for them. And as a result, I am emotionally, mentally, physically drained by the end of day one. As I reflect on day one, I'm also sitting here thinking, what did I actually accomplish with my students today? If you have not seen any of my prior teacher related blogs, then you may not know, but at my school, we have two groups of students that we see in a day and I teach math, science, and social studies to those two groups of students. So I have about 40 total students each year, give or take, of course, and I will have one group in the morning and another group in the afternoon. And I am sitting here thinking about 
What did I get accomplished with my morning group? What did I get accomplished with my afternoon group? Trying to make sure I'm balancing. I had more time this afternoon with that group than I did this morning. So I know there are a few things that I did in my afternoon group that I need to do with my morning group when I have them again. And I find myself feeling like I just talked at them all day. And I hate that feeling of, I just spent all day talking at you, talking at you about what you should do, what you shouldn't do, where to get things, where to put things, how to ask to go places, all of the new expectations and protocols and reminders about previous expectations and protocols, and just a lot of talking at my students. And I end up getting a little bit sucked into this idea that I didn't do anything good for them today or that I didn't really accomplish anything with them. And I, I spent a good amount of time this evening just kind of thinking that through. I was doing some editing of a totally not teacher related vlog and it gave my brain the opportunity to not only edit, but also do some thinking simultaneously. And while I was doing all of that, I had to stop myself and say, you need to remember all that you did do. You need to focus on the good in the day, the smiles that you saw on your students' faces and not worry about what you didn't accomplish or what you have to make sure you cover tomorrow. Those things will come. I will make sure they are done. And I know that. So I need to take a deep breath and I need to focus on the connections that I made with my students today because that is hugely important. Yes, it is important to let them know about our expectations and our procedures and our how-tos, but it's equally, possibly even more important to make them smile on the first day of school, to make sure that they feel seen and to make sure that they feel as safe and as comfortable as they can in a brand new space. And I feel like I did a great job at that. I feel that I connected with every student today. Of course, those connections are going to grow so much stronger and deeper in the days and weeks to come, but I feel like I made an initial connection with every single student that was in my care today. That is accomplishing exactly what day one is all about. The academics will come, the how-tos, the procedures, the expectations, anything I might have forgotten today, we'll get through it. They will know about it. They will be able to function as independent, mature fourth graders in no time. And it's just okay if I didn't cover every last thing today or if I didn't get to each thing at the same time with each group of students. It's okay that they don't know a whole lot about our jobs chart yet and that nobody has classroom jobs. It's day one. Who wants a classroom job on day one? They really probably don't care that much about that. Or even if they do, they're just excited knowing that it's coming. And it's completely fine that jobs weren't assigned today. It's also completely fine that we didn't pick up a pencil today. Instead, we used crayons and colored pencils and markers and we were creative. So it's fine that we didn't touch a pencil. We'll have plenty of time to use pencils throughout the school year. It's also fine that we had indoor recess on the first day of school. I don't know if that's actually fine. I'm trying to convince myself it is. It is what it is. We can't change the weather. So we had indoor recess on the first day of school and it's fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine, you know, as the saying goes. Really, it was fine. The students handled it wonderfully. I know that they were just as disappointed as we were as teachers. We love it when they can get outside and that's always our preference and often it is their preference as well. But guess what? They were flexible. I didn't hear a single complaint about indoor recess. From my own children I did, but that's different. They're fine. They will fall. Anything that needs to be accomplished will be accomplished. It will all fall into place. But what is most important and what I need to focus on and hold fast to is that I connected with every single student today. Teachers have different feelings about day one and we need to be okay with however we feel. I see some teachers who talk about how magical the first day of school is and how they look forward to the first day of school every year. They can't wait for it to come. That's beautiful and I love that for them. 
Personally, that's not me. I don't look forward to the first day of school. I look forward to the first day of school being behind us. And I think that's a result of me putting a lot of pressure on myself, trying to make sure that I'm giving my students everything they could possibly need on day one. And that's unrealistic, and that's something I need to work through. I think that contributes to me not feeling super excited about day one. For me, day one feels like a formality. It feels like a day where I'm doing a lot of talking at my students, where I'm getting to know them and trying to figure out what their stamina is like and when to give them breaks and how much more I can push them and trying to manage our new schedules and our new special times and did I get them to the right place at the right time and was I gentle enough with the students who had a slightly more worried face and were a little more reserved and who seemed a little shy, did I connect with them enough and I get inside my own head. And that is detrimental. And I know that there are other teachers like myself. There was a whole group of us this afternoon that was saying that we're so glad the first day is done because we don't look forward to the first day and we don't really find it all that magical. So I share this with the goal of reminding you, if you are a teacher or even if you're a parent watching this, that teachers have feelings too, just like our students. And it's okay if our students don't love the first day of school, don't find it magical, don't look forward to it, because teachers can feel that same way. And ultimately, that's okay. It doesn't mean that we're not excited about the school year or that there aren't great things to come. None of that is necessarily true. And instead, we just all have our own feelings. So whether you really looked forward to the first day of school, whether you dreaded it, whether you find it magical, whether you find it tedious, whether you wish you could have the first day of school every day, or whether you are so thankful the first day of school is done and you don't have to do that again for another year, all of that is normal. All of that is okay. We are on to a new school year. We are going to do amazing things for these children in our lives. There will be ups and downs. There will be bumps in the road. There will be days where we feel like we absolutely killed it. And there will be days where we feel like, did I do anything good for anyone today? All of that is part of the world of education and being a teacher and caring about the children that we are doing this job for. And with that, I'm going to end this vlog because it is already after nine o'clock. And tomorrow is only the second day with students and I want to be as rested for them as I can be. I'm working really hard on consistency and staying in a solid routine in the mornings. I'm not a morning person, I've said that before, but you can always change. You can always do better, be better. That is what I'm striving for right now. I am working hard to get up at a consistent time every day consistently do some form of a workout every morning. I cannot trust myself to do it in the evening. If I save it for the evening, it is very unlikely that it's going to happen. And to just leave myself a little bit of buffer time. In the past, it's been utilizing every single minute I have. That's part of my personality. And that's resulted in me not having any wiggle room when we have a spill that needs to be cleaned up or a dog has an accident that needs to be cleaned up. I haven't factored in minutes for those sorts of what ifs or once in a while events. And then I feel stressed out because I'm rushing to work and I'm worried about being late and sometimes I am borderline late. So anyway, we are going to set a goal. I've already set a goal to do better, be better, and to remember that I can change. I have said so many times and I've embedded it into my brain that I am not a morning person and that's okay. I can be not a morning person and also still slay the mornings. Both of those things can go hand in hand and I refuse to be told otherwise. So that is where I am at. I am not a morning person but I'm gonna slay the mornings anyway. So far, we are three for three. I have done an excellent job this week, and that's a start. You've gotta start somewhere. So we are going to keep that train rolling. That means I have a strict bedtime for myself of 10.30 p.m. 10 is preferable, 10.30 at the latest. And as I mentioned, it's already after nine. I need to go get my shower. I am a nighttime showerer. That just is cleansing for me. 
So I need to get that shower taken care of and then get myself to bed so I can just have a couple of down minutes before I turn off the lights and close my eyes. So to all of the other teachers out there, happy first day of school. We did it. I hope that you have a wonderful school year ahead. However you're feeling about the first day of school, it's okay. I give you permission to feel what you feel. If you haven't already subscribed to The Bees Business, I'd love it if you'd do so. I'd be so happy to have you here as a member of our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it with anyone else that you think may enjoy it, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.